I'm Duncan, and I'd like to talk to you about assessing listening and reading tasks in ESL classrooms. Now, these are both receptive tasks, so that's why I've combined them in this video. Um, we can't really see what's going on in our students' minds when they read something or if they're listening to something, so we assess these tasks in similar ways. Uh, Today, in this video, I'll be talking about different types of assessment for these skills, different sub-skills in reading and listening, and then I'll end with some tips when you're creating assessments for listening and reading. So when we think about different types of assessments for listening and reading, you can think about one main type of assessment. We give progress or achievement tests or quizzes um, for listening and reading, where we start out with a text at the beginning, a reading text or a listening text, you can think of it in that way. And after the students have listened to or read the text, then we see different types of questions to see what's going on in their minds. We have multiple choice, true, false, fill in the blank, matching, and sometimes short answer items on those assessments. Now with those different questioning types I talked about before, we look at different sub-skills with listening and reading. So first with reading, a lot of times we're looking at their vocabulary skills, if they can understand vocabulary in context of a sentence or in a paragraph. We're also looking at, sometimes looking at if they understand different affixes, prefixes, prefixes, suffixes, um, and we can see if they understand different parts of speech from a reading text. Also, we're looking at reading comprehension skills. This is the bulk of what you will see on a reading assessment. We're looking to see if students can predict information before they read, um, if they can identify main ideas and details in a reading, and sometimes we look to see if they can restate those main ideas and details in their own words. Also, we look at um, inference of implied ideas in the reading. Uh, it's also important to note that we want to look at critical thinking skills as well. So we're looking to see if students can synthesize ideas between multiple texts. Maybe you have sh two short passages on a reading exam and the students have to combine ideas between those passages. Uh, we're also looking to see if they can evaluate ideas or arguments in that text. So next, if we look at listening, uh, we have a lot of similarities, but one main difference would be that if students are listening to something, sometimes we are looking to see if they can identify speech patterns with what they're listening to. So intonation, stress, different things like that. But otherwise, we do see a lot of similarities with reading. We can look at vocab skills with a listening text and also listening comprehension. Can they get that main idea, the details, and then restate them just like with a reading exam? We also look at critical thinking skills in uh, listening assessments as well. So synthesizing information and evaluating ideas or arguments. So I'd like to end with some tips for you when you're creating uh, assessments for listening and reading. One of the most important things is to think about the topic that you're going to use for the text that you choose. Uh, think of something that your students are familiar with, something you've already been discussing in class, a topic that they're familiar with. Also, try to choose something that won't bring up negative emotions um, while they're taking that test. Uh, Think about vocabulary level as well. This should be something that students can understand fairly easily unless you're looking specifically for vocabulary skills of certain kinds. Also, uh, try to use authentic texts when possible. And one important thing I want to leave you with is if you are testing and you ask students to write a short answer, whether with reading or a listening assessment, do not deduct points for incorrect grammar or spelling if you're only truly assessing reading or listening. So I hope that 
some of these tips and these ideas will help you when you start to assess students for listening and reading in your ESL classroom.